It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, I said to you that periodically we would have our uh, legislators come on The Sam LaSant Show to give us an update of what's happening in the state. And today I'm very happy to have Senator John Udichak, who is the senatorial, 14th senatorial district, and uh, Representative Tara Tuhill, well, 116th uh, legislative district in the state of Pennsylvania, here to talk about what they're doing and are they uh, taking care of our tax uh, money. Um, Tara, John, thanks for coming on the show again. Uh, I want to thank the thank both you of you because you did live up to your promise when you ran. You said that you'd periodically come on just to fill us in what's going on. And uh, uh, it's always good to know what our state legislators do. First of all, I, I, I applaud anyone who's in politics today. It's a very difficult challenge. And uh, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I must say uh, congratulations. It is a challenge, okay, because people think that sometimes we have the ma you have the magic wand and you can just don't, and it'll be taken care of. With that being said... How, how do you think the state government um, is, uh, how are you in, in streamlining our government, which, you know, we see the budget, okay, how do you see this str streamlining, um, and, and th when you streamline, you have to do away with projects, okay? How do you find that balance as to, okay, we have to cut, we have to tighten our belts, but we know we're going to lose projects, and then that Get a, gets a lot, get a lot of people upset with that. So let me talk, we'll start with you, Tara. How do you react to that? Well, we've had to make some tough cuts, obviously, just like the people at home have been having to make uh, and really tighten, tighten the budget. So this year there were some tough cuts that were made uh, and, we, and we fought to keep money in important places uh, for the people that are in need. Uh, the welfare reform has been a, a big item uh, and you just want to be careful when you're making those cuts that you're not affecting those that are truly needy. Uh, and, and I think when we came in in this last election, government accountability, government reform uh, was a really big item. And we had the Penn Watch legislation was signed in through the House and the Senate. And that was signed by Governor Corbett, uh, po posting expenditures online and really just being more accountable in our expenditures. And, and that's what the people out there have, been, have asked for. On the Senate side, well, the, uh, the area that I think we need to focus on, and I think there's bipartisan agreement on that, is on the Department of Welfare. Uh, Auditor General Jack Wagner, Democrat, uh, put together a great report, a great audit of the uh, Department of Welfare. There's a lot of uh, abuse. Uh, we saw that uh, certainly in our legislative districts just down the road in Beaver Meadows where you have a, an illegal uh, alien, illegal immigrant uh, who has two Pennsylvania access cards taking advantage of public benefits uh, on the backs of the taxpayers while those that are in need are being forced out of programs. Uh, and so addressing those kind of abuses and also addressing the uh, addressing uh, modernization of, of, of our Department of Welfare, I think that's a, a Republican and Democrat issue. I think we need to tackle that where I disagreed uh, with, with the governor and with the current administration in, in last year's budget was the cuts to education. Uh, in K through 12 and, and, and higher education, uh, I don't think we can afford to take a step back. When we see how we're going to compete with the rest of the country and the rest of the world, it's going to be uh, with a highly educated and skilled workforce. Uh, and if we take a step back on the investments we're making in public education, uh, I think that's a, a mistake. So that's, that's where I, I differed uh, to a degree with the administration. I think there are opportunities to streamline government, make it more efficient, uh, and starting with the Department of Welfare certainly is, uh, is the best place to store it. Okay, there's two areas. Let's stick with welfare, okay? Uh, have, have, has it not have been done in the state of Pennsylvania knowing how much uh, fraud has, you know, that they're taking advantage of? Well, as the senator had mentioned, Auditor General Jack Wagner, when he did his report, uh, he came up with that there was an estimated $1 billion worth of fraud. Uh, the new administration now that they've come in, uh, it, it really has been such a mess getting in there, finding out what's wrong, finding out on all the different levels and layers uh, where the money is being misused. Uh, in this last month, they were able to take 100,000 people off of the rolls uh, that were receiving medical benefits. Uh, some were deceased. Some of the payments were going to out-of-state providers. So just by doing simple administrative audits within the department, they've been able to make some inroads. Uh, and, and that results in saving taxpayer money. 
Well, we have it in, in many towns. I, I don't think each one of you, or including me, are saying we don't want to help people. Okay, we are here, we want to help people that need it, okay? It's the greedy that we're concerned about, okay? Uh, you know, take care of the needy, not the greedy. But in some cases, you have people who, who do have uh, that work the system. They call it work the system, okay? Uh, and, and that's where I think uh, streamlining and putting r regulations into effect, which would be able to stop that. So what's happening to stop that, John? Well, I, I, I try to pay attention. To you, Sam, you, you always use the term common sense. If we have a little more common sense in, in how we approach uh, uh, the law, we'd be better off. We passed a measure this year uh, that is as common sense as you get. You have to prove your citizenship before you can get public benefit. If you're going to use the taxpayer dollars, you have to prove that you're a taxpayer. You have to prove that you're a Pennsylvania citizen. Uh, that would have prevented the case uh, that happened in Beaver Meadows where you had an illegal uh, immigrant uh, who uh, broke the law, uh, was apprehended, discovered that he had broken the law again by defrauding the taxpayers of Pennsylvania by requiring two public uh, welfare cards. You put an end to that by a common sense measure at the front end, empowering those that are, that are running the Department of Welfare to make sure that they can stop that abuse before it begins. So there is a plan in, in force right now to stop, stop this excessive uh, abuse. Yes, and in, in that same vein, the, there is legislation out there to deal with the fact that um, you know, there, there was such a lack of a, accountability with these cards. Uh, there's been measures that have gone through the House, and of course it has to get through the Senate, and, and, and vice versa, uh, where you, know, you have to be in possession of these access cards or these welfare benefits if they belong to you. Uh, they've stopped the cards, the access cards being used at the casinos for gambling. People were using them for gambling. People were using them to buy tobacco products. There was just such a misuse of it. Uh, so they, we've been able to stop that. Uh, but the problem is, is that Pennsylvania for so long has been so lax in checking on citizenship, in checking on uh, whether you're filing in New York and you're collecting New York benefits and Pennsylvania benefits just checking on that fraud, we've been so lax. So there's a lot of waste and abuse still there. And really people come to Pennsylvania because we have benefits galore, whereas New Jersey and New York are much more stringent. Getting back to education, I was under the impression here that there is more money in the, in the budget uh, in, in, in the um, education uh, for basic education. Uh, when Corbett was, when the governor was on my show, he mentioned that it, there's more money in this year than, well, the previous. Uh, is that correct? Well, and we did lose the federal money that was coming in, okay. a large portion of the federal money. So although it looks that there was a big cut in education, uh, there there really is more public, public education on the state level, more money going into the public education on that level. And I, I think overall, uh, you know, we actually were touring a school today, and it's so important looking at you know, smaller class sizes. And that directly ties in with the fact that we're not educating our children for the future. And that's a, a huge... Well, that, that's where I, again, would disagree with, with the governor. Uh, you, all you have to look, and, and it's a subject that we've talked about many, many times, take a look at the amount of school districts that had to raise local property taxes. Yes. Quite a few of them. Yes. Uh, the vast majority of them across the board in Pennsylvania had to raise local property taxes because state support went down. Harris correct in that the, the federal government, the stimulus money, most, most of the stimulus money coming into Pennsylvania went into our public schools. Uh, and so when you look at the numbers and, 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 and the numbers and the accounting, you can, you can shift those numbers around. But the bottom line is less total dollars are going in to K through 12 and going in uh, to our higher education system. There's, there's no question of that. Uh, I think we need a different approach. I think we need a different formula. I think we need to get away from property tax as the primary source uh, of public education. And I've supported efforts in the past to, to look at modernizing our sales tax system, which hasn't been touched since the late 1960s. 
I, I think that there is more creative ways that we can fund public education than using the property tax system. It's, it's, it's failed. It's, it's not suited to the 21st century. And I, I hope uh, that we can get a focus. I know I'm working with, uh, uh, with Tara, with Representative uh, Doy Heffley and Senator Argel uh, down in uh, Schuylkill County to advance uh, those kind of measures to move away from the property tax as the primary source of public education. Okay, folks, if you just tuned in, I'm talking to Senator John Udichak, State Senator, and Representative Tara Tuhill. As we said many times, uh, the vehicle of getting information out to you uh, is to let you know what our legislators are doing. And um, we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, education, common sense, how do we get uh, uh, accountability uh, for the projects we already have in the state of Pennsylvania. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show, folks. My guest today, Senator John Yadichak and Representative Tara Tuhill. But before we go to them, remember, Atomic and Mountain Spring Water, folks, the official water of SSP TV and Samson Productions. Folks, if they don't have this water where you buy it, ask for it, okay? Same water that Starbucks uses. And yes, folks, I'm taking my two shots every day of Mona V. Dan Basala, give him a call. You'll know what I mean when you start using this. Um, okay, getting back to our state. Uh, I always said this, I said it when I interviewed the governor when he was attorney general and we went on the set a couple weeks ago, common sense factor. You know, uh, when you're talking about everything that you have to know as, as a state representative and, and a state senator, um, there, there's a wealth of knowledge that we have in the state of Pennsylvania with a lot of people who are in different areas. For example, if it's education, there are a lot of retired education people who are in education that can bring a lot to the table. Do you ever take advantage of, of advisory boards and looking at, for example, in the mining industry, when you're looking at energy, where people have been there that are willing to give up their time? Have you ever looked into, into getting that kind of thing in, in advisory boards? Tara, I'll ask you first. Well, what I do, I mean, everyone has a background, and obviously I have a, I have a legal background, uh, but especially with education, I always reach out to the teachers, and you try to just establish a rapport and, and bounce ideas off of, off of people, and, and you kind of have your, your group of trusted advisors, I think, that um, you, you go to with certain, certain issues, whether it's, I mean, with health care and education, those are areas that I always take as much advice as I can and kind of sift through it. And you always read as much as you can mm -hmm. as well. I think, I think the word you said is trusted advisors. John? Sure. I mean, you always reach out to, the, to those with expertise. I mean, during the, uh, uh, the flood recovery efforts, uh, for example, in, in, in the Wyoming Valley, I mean, we worked with Kevin O'Donnell up here at Can-Do, uh, Larry Newman down at the, the Wilkes-Barre Chamber of Commerce, Rosemary DeSoy at the Greater Pittston Area Chamber of Commerce, and Jerry Hodak at the South Valley Chamber of Commerce to come up uh, with a kind of outside-the-box, innovative approach to helping businesses impacted by the flood. What we were seeing as we were touring the businesses uh, after the flood, that a lot of those businesses, small mom and pops, that were falling under the radar screen of, of the federal programs, they just weren't gonna, gonna be accessible to these kind of businesses, but they were very important to our economy. We found that uh, nearly 200 businesses were impacted by the flood, would have about a $75 million impact on our economy in Luzerne County, should those businesses not open again. And down at Shikshini, where you see recently uh, reports that uh, one of the banks are pulling out, closing their, their branch, we don't want to see that happen. Uh, we already have a job crisis in, in Luzerne County, over 25,000 residents unemployed, uh, highest unemployment rate for two years running, uh, the highest unemployment in the state. So uh, we reached out to the economic development uh, professionals put together kind of an ad hoc advisory board, came up with a program, created a $4 million loan program, revolving loan program to help the uh, flood victims first and then to be a perpetual job creation machine going forward in terms of helping those small businesses that are really the lifeblood of our communities. Staying in that same vein about job creation, okay? I asked the governor, I said, why is it, starting from the federal government, okay, across the board were, and I'm not saying you two do this, but the small businessman, okay, the small businessman such as me, okay, why don't they make our lives a little bit easier instead of always pounding us, okay? I mean, it, when you're hitting the small businessman, okay, if you make my life miserable, 
why do I want to expand? Why do I have hire more people? Why should I want to do that when you're, you're killing me every time I turn around? Okay, what, have, what are you doing in that respect? Because you need job creation. You need some kind of incentive to do these kind of things. Okay, and I'm speaking for all, thousands of small business uh, people in the state of Pennsylvania. Tara? Well, one of the things has been obviously with the flood affected communities, we had businesses that were in jeopardy of, of never being able to bounce back from this. So now at least they're going to be able to get a, a business loan to repair themselves. Because uh, you know, each one of those businesses, if it's five jobs, 10 jobs, up, you know, up to 100 jobs in those businesses, uh, if, if one of those businesses fails, we lose all those jobs. And that would obviously increase our unemployment here. That's already at such a high level. Uh, so loans, I mean, it's very hard for small businesses to find loans right now in our communities. Um, and then with over-regulation, um, some of our, oh, I mean, a lot of it is federal, but there's been such intense regulation uh, and, and the, just the taxes on the small businesses, it's very hard to get by. Uh, the health care has gone up. The, I have had a number of small businesses that have said, you know, my health care costs for my employees has gone up 40% and 60%. So they're looking at cutting employees. They're not looking at, exactly. at increasing the employment exactly. uh, opportunities. Yeah. So there's, there's some areas that we need to forge ahead on. John? Small businesses, like you, Sam, are, are the real engines of growth in, in our communities across the country. Small businesses are where the jobs are created. Unfortunately, whether it's the federal government or state government, they're not geared to assisting small business. That's why the, the, the uh, Small Business Loser and County Small Business uh, uh, Loan Program, I think, is very important. It's the first of its kind uh, in Luzerne County where we're focusing strictly on those small businesses. You know, most of the state programs, whether it's KOZ programs, whether it's state incentives through DCD, the governor's action team, they're trying to hit that home run, trying to bring that company in. That's creating a thousand jobs. And, and we spend an awful lot of money doing that. Uh, you know, the, the DCD budget, even though it took about a $115 million hit in, in, in this past year's budget, is still over $100 million. But if you take, just for example, those, those flood impacted businesses, 200 of them, represent about 5,000 jobs. If they add two jobs, if we help them add two jobs, you're creating 10,000 jobs. Exactly. That's what we need to focus on. That's where we can rebuild communities like Hazleton, Hazel Township, Freeland. It's going to be on the backs of the small businesses. But you hit on a very good point. And if you notice, it's, it's those small businesses, the, those in the middle that are being sque squeezed out, whether it's a small business or it's a working family. Those in the middle that don't qualify for the programs at the bottom of the scale and don't get the breaks at those at the top of the scale. We need to reprogram government to focus on those in the middle that pay the taxes, do the work, send the kids to the school and build our communities. That's where we really need to focus our energy. The sad part of the flood situation. First of all, these people didn't want a flood. You get devastated. Um, they were looking at anywhere from three to five, six percent, and then I think Congressman Balletta came in and, and, and had a one percent factor right now with loans, okay? My thing was, okay, we've given billions of dollars away, okay, with the stimulus, and we've, we've taken care of all the, everybody, uh, and we go to these different countries, which is great, okay? These people didn't ask for it, okay? I, I think there should be money, grant money, for these people saying, look, you know, as long as it's justified, this is what we're going to give it to you. Okay, 1% is fantastic versus what they were paying before. But that's another story. I mean, that's federal. I'm not talking about what, what you guys, but th they're suffering. Some of them have loans the way it is. Some of them are paying lines of credit. Some of them are paying loans. And now here's another loan on top of it. Okay, so then do I look at bankruptcy? Okay, and just call it quits, all right, or, or do I move in? When we come back, I want to talk about the energy, okay, in the state of Pennsylvania, Marcella Shale, and then, of course, uh, John Rich's project, okay, what he wants to do, and uh, the roadblocks that he's been, he's been getting. Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Yudichak and Representative Tara Toohill. Very nice of them to come on the Sam LaSanche show, as they promised, folks. I like politicians who say something and they follow up with it. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanche show, folks. Remember, 24-7 SSP-TV 
Folks, can you believe it? Over 1 million hits on our website. Thank you so much. Every show we have, all our news, and thank you, incidentally, in Greater Hazleton for making us your number one news source, uh, television news source. Uh, up to 60,000 people every day watching our news. Uh, and, of course, it even gets better with our partnership with the Standard Speaker and the Citizen Voice. you got 105,000 people that we're able to get uh, information out to. My guest, Senator John Udichak and Representative Tara Tuhill. Marcella Sale, what's your position on that? Well, recently, uh, both the House and the Senate passed versions uh, of a Marcella Shale bill. Uh, Senate Bill 1100, which we had worked on very closely with Senator uh, Scarnati, we were very close to having a bar bipartisan consensus bill. Uh, it fell apart at the end, uh, it really over two issues. Uh, revenue, uh, uh, the governor continues to insist on, uh, on a low number, uh, between 90 and $100 million, in terms of what kind of revenue they want the fee to generate. And, and really the main stumbling block is this idea that you're going to have universal preemption of local zoning laws. Uh, I think that runs against the grain of everything that we've done uh, in Pennsylvania uh, and would set a very dangerous precedent uh, that we're for one industry. And remember, this is only for the natural gas industry that we're going to have universal preemption. But what's next? I mean, what industry uh, would, would fight for that uh, preemption next? So I think it's a very dangerous road they're going down. Hopefully we can strip that out uh, uh, in our conversations and our negotiations over the summer. We felt that we were going to be able to roll that out. And I think we can continue to argue over the numbers. But it's very important that we have a severance tax or an impact fee. Uh, this is an unconventional drilling process. Uh, it's an extraction of our natural resources. Uh, and right now, uh, it, it, most of that, it, it, they're looking to ship that overseas. And the last thing I want to see is happen in anthracite, where we're going to fuel the rest of the world's industrial revolution, and yet we're going to pay for the sins of the industry. Taxpayers are going to pay for the sins of the industry, just as they are right now, continue to, to, to do in the coal industry. We have to make sure that we have environmental protection regulations in place. We've got to have an appropriate revenue in place. I do think it could be transformative. I do think it can be very important. It's already bringing down some of our energy costs. UGI just announced a 9% reduction uh, in, in energy bills because of the, the low price of natural gas. I think John Rich, and I've had many conversations with John Rich, and he was actually very helpful uh, in guiding me uh, during the discussion on the legislation. I think that there's an opportunity with what John Rich wants to do in getting fuel into the tanks of our cars to lower, as you and I have talked many times, that's where we're really going to see an economic impact when we get into the fuel in vehicles. That's going to transform our economy, but you still have to make sure that you're stewards of the environment. Uh, right now, uh, House Bill 1950 and Senate Bill 1100, I think, fall short. Tara, your position. Uh, well, they do in ways, and that we're going to have to have a compromise. 1950 was already a compromise just to get the votes through because you have people uh, representing their districts that absolutely in no way, shape, or form want to tax this industry. Uh, it's the only, they, you know, they already pay corporate taxes. They're already paying into our revenue stream. Uh, and then you have to weigh that against the fact that, you know, here in this district, uh, the people wanted a tax. So we have to, it was a compromise. And I think all parties weren't extremely happy with, with the end product. So now we're going to have to uh, face that up against the Senate bill. So there's still a lot of work to be done in this area. Uh, but overall, I think what we can agree on is that this country and the state of Pennsylvania is so dependent upon foreign oil. Uh, every single one of us, you know, when we drove here today, it's on, on that foreign oil. Uh, and we have right beneath our feet this tremendous resource uh, that would be able to liberate us and, and create so many jobs here in Pennsylvania. So it's something that uh, while you do want to have a reasonable uh, impact fee and you want to protect the environment and, and put that first, you also want to be able to stimulate the economy here. And, and that's why I, I, I really think that uh, the administration is looking only at the short term. We really have to look at the long term here. If we really want to use our great fortune of having this natural resource and transform the economy, we need to partner with guys like John Rich. Right now, we've been able, uh, I think, to put uh, a few provisions in that bill that would have limited dollars for the kind of research and development to help companies develop natural gas, coal gasification, and those kind of new innovative ideas. But it's a small part of the bill. 
Uh, if we're going to have the end uses of the industry where the, where the gas is going to be sold here in Pennsylvania rather than to the highest bidder in China or in India or overseas, we, we, that's not in 1950, House Bill 1950, Senate Bill 1100 right now. And that's, that's my big concern. The governor keeps, keeps saying it, saying energy equals jobs. Well, let's look at Texas. There's no bigger energy state than Texas. They have over 8% unemployment. You need a long-term job strategy to take the advantage of, of the energy that we have and translate it into real jobs. I'd love to see power plants built with natural gas up here. I'm going to tour UGI tomorrow that transformed an old uh, waste coal facility into a, a natural gas facility. Uh, and that, those kind of innovative ideas are what we're going to have to pursue. There's, an old, there's a community on television that says, get her done, okay? Uh, and I know uh, John Rich sat where you sit, sat are sitting right now, Tara, probably on my show a zillion times. Congressman Barletta sat where you sat in the show, and we hear the same thing, okay? John's been fighting for years. Congressman Barletta is on the floor, and I'm, I'm not, I don't care whether he's a Republican or Democrat, it has nothing to do with it, fighting on the floor, okay, and saying, look, we have the resources in Pennsylvania. We could establish thousands of jobs. The initial plant was going to establish a thousand construction jobs for three years with 350 people working better than uh, than 20 some 25 dollars an hour. Then that was only the model plan for them. And so you wonder in your mind why? Well, to me, there's a big political thing going on in the country and the middle class, and we always have to pay the price for that. Um, time is up. Okay, I want to. I always want to thank the both of you for coming on. I really appreciate that in informing our public folks. If you have any questions uh, that you'd like to ask a good senator. Uh, his number, uh, 570-740-2434, and uh, Congress um, um, Representative Tuil is 453-1344. If you have any questions, please give them a call. Uh, they're more than happy to, uh, to answer your questions. And remember, 24-7 SSPTV.com, you can watch this show anywhere in the world. Thank you so much for all the nice comments on the Sam Sancho. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>